skills in drills are a great alternative to a mini game situation. I find you can get more in when you use skills and drills and it keeps the children on their toes. They know they're not going to be doing this for the whole lesson, so it keeps them interested and thinking well, what we're going to do next. We are going to play the DVD game. Yes. I've got some buttons. So, who can tell me what that button does? Kaya. Play. Play. Resources you will need for the DVD player game are pictures of symbols that children can recognise from a DVD. For example, stop, pause and fast forward. So, can everybody show me play? Very good. Lies start the game with a symbol play. This means that the children have to walk around the space, making sure they don't bump into each other. The next one is what? Following from this, I will then maybe ask the children to do pause, which involves the children jumping up and down on one spot. Your feet should be landed on the same spot each time. Stretch your arms up as well to try and get even higher. OK. Fast forward. Now remember, fast forward is running on the spot. Ready? Go! Five, four, three, two, one. And stop. I use the symbol stop to get the children back on task. This involves the children getting into as small a shape as they can by crouching down. Hug your knees, so we're stop. Oh, really small. The duration in which the children are doing each activity depends on their age and attention span. Okay, right. For the younger children, I tend to try and be quite quick with each activity. Pause. Bouncing on the spot. Reach up if you want to. Stop. However, I would suggest for Key Stage 2 that you introduce more activities there such as go. skip, where the children Five, skip around the space, four, and also slow motion, three, where the children act two, as if they're in slow motion. One, Traffic lights is a way of teaching the fundamental skill of when you pass a football, your head should be up. Lots of reasons, so you can see who you're passing to, making sure there's no defenders around you and that you're not going to bump into anybody. So we've agreed, when we're playing football, our head should be... Ah. Right, OK, what you're going to do for me now, you're going to dribble around this court, you're going to use the whole court, dribbling these footballs, OK? <laughs> so Children dribble the football around the area and I hold a cone up, but to see what colour I've got up, their head has to be up. Come on, your first round we go. All the time, heads up, looking. If it's a red cone, they have to stop the ball with their foot on top of it. Well done, Isabel, that was a great idea. Excellent, red is... Stop! Well done, your first round you go again. If I change your cone to orange, they do something different, they may have to sit on the ball. Guys, the teamwork from this class is fabulous. Well done. Right, chickens, out you get. Around you go again for me, please. Well controlled, Ellie. Nice turn as well, Sam. OK, you're watching. For green, I always let the class choose what they want to do. <laughs> It creates ownership, and I tend to take it a bit more seriously if they've chosen the last skill. Well done, year five. Pick up your ball, come back to me. What do you think I was most proud of then is? Teamwork. Teamwork was incredible. And encouragement. There was loads of it. I didn't say to you, shout out and let everybody else know. You came up with that idea yourself. That was, a, that was legendary as far as I'm concerned. You all did brilliant. Give yourself a pat on the back. With my class, I introduced the bean game as early as possible. We started with just three activities to begin with, and then we added so, one activity each week. Now, the children the easily know a dozen. What's one of the beans we can use? Ethan. Jelly bean. Jelly bean. So can everyone show me jelly bean? Remember, shake all your legs and your arms. Uh, stop. I start the lesson by using flashcards to recap some of the activities. This one, who can tell me what this one is? Broad bean. Broad bean, everyone show me broad bean. Thanks, <laughs> 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 can jump in bean. Uh, then frozen bean. 
The throws and bean activity is really good to use if you want to get the children back on task. This is especially useful for the children who are easily distracted. Chili bean. Ooh. Okay, I'm bored of being the teacher now. I want to be like you. So I need someone to come and be the teacher for me. To extend some of the more able children in the classroom, I do a role reversal exercise. So Kaya is going to be the teacher. So go choose a card. Broad bean. This allows the more able children to start to develop their own warm-up routine. Run a bean. Run a bean. And hopefully this is something they will start to develop even when the teacher's not around. Everyone show me kidney bean. Laying on the floor, making a nice moon shape. In key stage two, the game is less teacher-led and more focused on the children going into groups and developing their own routines. Stringy bean is one we've made. However, the children still like to use bean. the bean symbols. Nice and stretched in the sky. This warm-up can be used in many different ways. I would suggest that if your main activity has a running element, then you end the warm-up on the runner bean. If your main activity has a jumping element, then maybe end on the Mexican jumping bean activity, and so on. Higher! As high as you can go. PE to me should be all about the whole class moving for the majority of the lesson. I think children should be puffed out at the end of PE. They should be red faced. They should be physically exerted. Right, we're going to get straight into squares now, which is a great skill to get you in the mood for football. Okay. Yes. Squares is a really great way of getting the whole class moving in a small situation. If you look at the guys behind you, they should have their square set up for us. OK, guys, show us what you would do if this was your square. I found it a really good idea to get three or four children to demonstrate within the square before the whole class gets going. Good. Quick feet. Is this doing step-ups on her board? Look. But all the time they're staying in their square. You ready to have a go, guys? Yeah. The children set themselves up within four cones and within that square they, they do what they want with a the football. Oh, get it, Terry. Well stopped! I find setting a learning objective early on during the session is a great way of pulling the best from the children. To get the certificate for today, what I'm looking for is praise and encouragement of each other. That sort of thing would hopefully spill over into the classroom and benefit their learning across the whole curriculum. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, thanks. Bad luck, mate. Just keep trying, never give up. Keep going, Dan. I believe that it's really important to touch four elements during a PE lesson. Squares does that. Technically, they are learning to control the ball. Physically, they're using their balance, coordination, they're moving around. Socially, they're learning from their peers. There's probably some communication going on, some teamwork. Psychologically, they've got to decision make. They've got to think, what am I going to do next? There's so much they can get from those four cones in the ball. Keep going with it. Well saved again. They can learn to stop a ball, do step ups on and off the ball, Whoa. dribble a ball through cones. It's looking good. Look at that. That's really skillful. Thanks. Well done. It's really easy to differentiate as well with squares. If someone's finding the activity a little bit tricky, quietly go around, make the square a bit bigger, just tap the cones out with your foot. If someone's doing really well, make the square smaller. Why well, am I making it harder for you? Because you know what you're doing. Go on, show me what you got. Well done, good man. Well controlled, Terry. Good lad. Is your square? Good man. Squares is also great to do at the start of a new sport, whether it's netball, hockey, basketball, because they can use whatever they need to use within that square. You can wander around and see who's at what level. Then when it comes to move on to perhaps paired activities, you can then perhaps put a less able child with a more abled one and hopefully they'll learn from each other. I have to say that was brilliant. You all encourage each other, but this person encourage people in a way that was very low-key, he was very quiet about it, and he's also very talented himself, but he's never, ever patronising to other people. And today, it goes to Troy. So, well done, Troy. I've got to put your name on it, all right? So do it the best of pleasure. Well done. Excellent. Well done, guys. Thank you. Stomp, 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 stomp.
stomp dance gives the opportunities for boys and girls to express themselves by stomping around, showing attitude. But it especially works really well for boys who may feel a little self-conscious about dance. This time we're going to stomp, stomp low, stomp high. To start with we have a clear warm-up so we don't strain anything and we do this by reviewing some of the stomp moves we've already learnt in the previous lesson. As a teacher, you don't need any dancing ability at all. It's just a four by four movement, which is very, very simple. Before starting the main activity, make it clear to the children the expectations that you want them to achieve. OK, so remember, clear starting, clear finishing, think about your moves. I think we should start low and then go high. Ask the children to carry out four moves. Give them the opportunity to be creative within their move, but be clear that they have to follow the stomp style. What do you now? We could spin and then we could end back to back. Yeah. Like, that looks good. And then we could go again. Yeah. Okay, that works. Let's try it. During this part of the lesson, you will see children really, really cooperating, making decisions, practising their moves and reviewing things and saying, no, that doesn't work, let's try it like this. So there will be a real buzz. This is not working. Do it again. Do the same thing. Once the children have worked together, they will perform the series of movements that they have created as a group. So you're going to do it once without the music, then you're going to do it once with the music. Okay. The first group I'd like to go is Lily's group. Okay. Yeah. This lesson can be really inclusive because the more able children will encourage the less able children and the stomp style movement means that they can do a simple repetitive movement and feel successful at that move. From the performance, you will feel a great amount of enthusiasm from the children and it's really positive then to get the other children to comment on the parts they like and on one area to improve upon so the group can take their performance forward. What, what's positive? What have they done? Emma? They had a clear start and clear finish. Fantastic. That's exactly what I asked. Clear start, clear finish. Once the children have worked together, they will feel a huge sense of achievement and they've got an end product to show. So to take this lesson forward, it would be nice to give the children opportunity to perform it to the whole school or to a different audience.